Okay, let's talk a little bit about Kogel Points. So with Kogel Points, and let's say that you have some initial graphics that you want to use to establish your Kogel Points. So one way to do it that some people will do is geometry, Kogel Points, new. And with the new, you could enter some point number in there using these locate or target buttons, selection buttons, whatever you want to call them. Um, use this to lock onto a, a particular end of line. It grabs the coordinates out of there, give it some description, some style, display style, apply, throws it into the Kogo buffer. If you have a lot of graphics to do, and okay, so there it is. If you have a lot of graphics like this, um, that could take a while. It's a lot of selection. I mean, it'll get, you, get the job done, but there's easier ways to do it. So another option to do this, let me just kind of flush this out of here. Another way to do it is to, uh, one last thing, delete that, is to basically select it, put a fence around it, somehow, you know, uh, you could pick it one by one, but um, I'd like to select it, uh, if you turn levels on and off, however you want to isolate what you need, and then do import geometry, and you're going to do it from graphics and there's you could bring horizontal alignments in vertical so on uh, add this set to kogel points give it some you know point range in there uh, i've got a description they're kind of hanging on here a lot corners give it some sort of display style and then uh, the geometry project that you want to push these kogel points into or it's going to extract them out of the microstation uh, file and put them into the alg file and then there's an option here to not create a duplicate Kogel points because if depending on how it was drawn, if it's smart lines or line strings, there's only one point at the vertex. But if it's a line and then a separate line and a separate line touching each other, you're going to end up with a Kogel point duplicates that are on top of each other at the end of one line and start of the other line. So the, this option here uh, kind of cleans that up, it does a little mop up, make sure there's nothing duplicate. And then it's just a matter of applying it and close this and here they are basically kogo points for all of those corners and if i uh, deselect this and view this just to kind of confirm what we've got here let's go horizontal annotation a little wild card in here We've got all these points listed in here. We'll annotate the point, put a point number on there, and display it. Of course, this is all dependent on the style that's attached to it. I'm just using the assigned style. You could override that style by putting a, you know, selecting a different style here. Um, I'm just going to use the assigned. It's a default to be just a basic display. And let's apply this. And there we go. So we end up with. Kogel points at each of those uh, line ends and vertices. And from there, uh, you could go ahead and go to create edit alignment by Kogel points if you want to create uh, those lots or those shapes uh, and get the bearings distances annotated on there. Uh, you've the numbering wasn't quite sequential enough for you because it's really going to import and assign numbers based on the graphic. Uh, the order that it was drawn in, whichever lines were drawn, I'm sure you wouldn't know that unless you drew it, but uh, the it's really the sequence of the numbers may not be exactly how you want it. That's just kind of the price you pay for doing this, but you can always go to the geometry <clears throat> and rename if you want to go to the uh, Kogo points rename and you know resequence them or um, change one of the names for some reason. So there you have it, Kogel points. Uh, bring them in in basically batch if you have some graphics. That's it, enjoy.